In this video, I'll take a look at some of the best options for a stocks and shares ISA in the new tax year 2024-25, and I think this is the most exciting tax year for ISAs yet. A stocks and shares ISA is the most popular type of investment account we have in the UK, and it allows us to invest up to £20,000 per tax year, shielded from any taxes on investment growth, dividends or interest. In this sense, a stocks and shares ISA can be described as a wrapper that keeps the tax man away. It is becoming increasingly important to use a tax wrapper as the capital gains and dividend allowances have been decreasing and they are set to decrease again. It is easier than it has been in a long time now to breach these allowances if investing outside of a tax advantaged account. Previously, we've only been able to contribute to one stocks and shares ISA per tax year, so if you deposited £100 with one provider, you could not then go and use the rest of your allowance with a different provider. You had to stick to the platform you first contributed to, unless you went through the official transfer process. This was very limiting and led to a lot of investors being stuck with a platform they were not 100% satisfied with. However, from the new tax year starting the 6th of April 2024, these rules are changing and we will be able to open and contribute to multiple stocks and shares ISA. This is a game changer and means investors will be able to try out more platforms, split their portfolios however they like, and not get locked into a provider they're unhappy with. It'll also stop beginners from making the mistake of contributing to more than one and then having to deal with the HMRC headache afterwards. Of course, the £20,000 total ISA allowance still applies, so you can't go depositing 20k into loads of different accounts. That would be pretty ridiculous. But you can split this 20k however you like between many stocks and shares ISA providers. For example, I could contribute £5,000 each into four different stocks and shares ISAs on four different platforms, and this would be completely fine. I'll discuss in more detail why I personally find this so exciting and what my plans are at the end of the video. When it comes to picking a stocks and shares ISA platform, the competition between account providers gets fiercer every year. This is of course great for us as investors as it drives innovation and should also drive fees lower. But it can also make it difficult to decide what to go for when faced with so many good options. Therefore, by going through some of the best providers in detail, I'll help you decide which one, or for the first time ever, which ones, plural, are the best for you. For each provider I go through, I'll look at the pricing structure, as fees are understandably the most important consideration for many. Almost equally as important is the investment range offered by the provider, as you need to make sure you'll be happy with the investment options available. And I'll also cover any additional features that I think are worth mentioning. Unlike other best stocks and shares ISA videos, I'll not only give a detailed run through of some of the best providers, but I'll also share with you and give you free access to my comparison spreadsheet to help you compare providers yourself and make a more informed decision about which stocks and shares ISA is the best for you in the new tax year. I'll keep this spreadsheet updated if things change throughout the year, so no matter when you're watching this, you can refer to this resource to get the most up-to-date information. This spreadsheet includes many options not covered in the video. I'd have loved to go through all these options in detail, but doing so would have made the video way too long. So whilst I will focus on the providers that I personally think are among the best, you do not have to take my word for it, and you can use my research tool to form your own decision. You may well reach a different conclusion to me. After the run through, I'll use the spreadsheet to show you how you can compare providers and see how some may work out better depending on your circumstances and or preferences. Before I dive into the provider run through though, a couple disclaimers and a bit of housekeeping to get out of the way. You'll find the links to all the platforms discussed in the description below, and whilst this video is not sponsored, I do have affiliate links for a couple of them, and these will be clearly labelled as such. These may give you a bonus if you sign up via them, and I may also earn a small commission. But, to be clear, the presence or absence of an affiliate link has not impacted my overview of them or recommendation. Presenting the options fully and retaining your trust is the most important thing to me. The objective of this video is to help you make your own decision through the information provided. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor, and remember, when investing, your capital is at risk. Everyone's circumstances are different, and if you're unsure about the ISA rules or whether investing is right for you, please do your own due diligence and seek advice from a regulated and authorised financial advisor. Speaking of regulation, I also want to make clear that all the providers featured in this video are authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority and covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. You can check this yourself for any provider by simply searching for their name on the FCA register. With all that important information out of the way, let's begin. The first stocks and shares ISA provider I'll look at is Vanguard. Vanguard has been one of the top and most popular choices for a stocks and shares ISA for a while now, and this is with good reason. For those who are not interested in any frills or advanced features, 
but place a great deal of importance on going with an established, reputable provider, this may be the one for you. As they put it themselves, they have over 45 years of experience, they offer a straightforward approach, and importantly, a competitive, low-cost pricing structure. Looking at the fees, Vanguard has a platform fee of 0.15% capped at £375 per year. A percentage fee like this is great for smaller portfolios and the £375 cap means that once your portfolio reaches a size of £250,000, any further growth will not lead to any more platform fees. Vanguard also has no dealing fees if you use their batch once per day dealing or £7.50 if you want to buy a specific quote. I can't imagine you'd ever use this live dealing service though, but it is worth mentioning. And importantly, as Vanguard has no dealing fees if using the batch service, this also means that Vanguard has no fees for dividend reinvestment or for setting up a regular buy, unlike some other providers. And the final fee I'll mention for all providers is a foreign exchange fee. But in the case of Vanguard, this is not applicable because Vanguard only offers investments that trade in GBP. That brings us nicely onto the investment choice, and as I have mentioned, Vanguard does offer a straightforward approach, so there's not much choice here. They do not offer individual stocks, and in terms of funds, they only offer their own ETFs and mutual funds. According to their website, they have 29 ETFs and 57 mutual funds to choose from. Their filters do seem to count the income and accumulation versions of funds as one though, so if you count them separately, then these numbers will be higher. Regardless, you are limited to Vanguard products, and that is a negative for me personally. But it may well not be a problem for you, and to be honest, if you just want a super simple long-term fund portfolio, Vanguard has all you need. You can invest in super popular choices such as the Vanguard S&P 500, the FTSE All World, and the Global All Cap. For many, one of these options alone will be all they're interested in. However, another negative for me about Vanguard's investment offering is they do not allow fractional shares. This is not applicable for mutual funds, but for ETFs, not being able to have fractional shares can be annoying. For example, one share of the Vanguard S&P 500 currently costs around £78. So if you have less than that in cash, then you are unable to invest it and you'll have to sit on that cash until you have enough to buy a whole share. This can be particularly annoying when receiving dividends, as you may not be able to reinvest your dividends straight away if it is less than £78. Moving on to look at the additional features and functionality, Vanguard does offer a managed service at an additional charge of 0.3% per year, so this may be something to consider for those who want a completely hands-off approach. Given the point of Vanguard is to offer low-cost index fund investing that anyone can understand, I do think a managed service in this case is a bit pointless for most people, but you may disagree. Vanguard does also offer transfers in and out, so you can move your stocks and shares ISA to and from them, and this is free to do, but they do not offer any additional incentive for doing so, unlike other platforms. Platforms. In terms of using Vanguard, you are limited to the website as they do not have a phone app. Again, this is something that may not bother people because you don't really need to check your ISA all the time, but I do think in 2024, an app is a must have for a stock and shares ISA. My verdict for the Vanguard Stocks and Shares ISA is that it is a solid choice for those who want to go with an established platform, it has a cheap account fee, especially for small to mid-sized portfolios, and it does have a decent investment range, but for me personally, it's a bit too limited. Next on the list is Invest Engine, the ETF investment platform. Regular viewers of the channel will know that I've had my own stocks and shares ISA with Invest Engine for the current tax year, and I've been very happy with their offering. So speaking as a customer, I do have no complaints. They are relatively new on the scene, having been launched in 2019 by the co-founder of Gumtree, but despite being new, as I will show, they have a super competitive offering, and in my opinion, are giving Vanguard a run for their money. Looking at the pricing structure, for their DIY stocks and shares ISA, there are no platform fees, no dealing fees, and consequently also no regular buy or dividend reinvestment fees. FX fees are not applicable, as they only offer investments that trade in GBP. Putting all that together means that with the Invest Engine DIY ISA, the only fees you pay are the fees of the ETFs themselves. But you pay these fees regardless of which provider you use to invest in an ETF. This is not an Invest Engine fee. Of course, you can't really beat free, so Invest Engine is very appealing when it comes to their pricing, and they give this example on their website that shows you just how much money you could save compared to other popular providers. I'm not going through any of these providers in detail in this video, but they are all on my spreadsheet. Every penny you save on fees is another penny that can be invested and compound over time. Just plug some numbers into an investment return calculator, and you'll see how much difference even a small fee can make over the long term. 
Moving on to the investment range, this is another area in which Invest Engine is very appealing. It is an ETF only platform, so if you're interested in individual stocks or mutual funds, then it is not for you. But when it comes to ETFs, they offer over 610 from a range of different providers, including iShares, Wisdom Tree, X Trackers, JP Morgan, and of course, the most popular, Vanguard. In fact, because Invest Engine has no platform fees for their DIY ISA, it's actually cheaper to hold Vanguard ETFs on Invest Engine than on the Vanguard platform itself. For example, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, VUSA, has an ongoing charge of 0.07%. So the total fee for holding this on Invest Engine is 0.07%. However, as Vanguard has a platform fee of 0.15%, the total fee for holding VUSA on Vanguard is 0.22%. So this really puts us into perspective why Invest Engine is so appealing for ETF investors. You're not missing out on the popular Vanguard funds and can actually hold them for cheaper. And you also have the added benefit of being able to access a range of options from other providers. I'm personally a big fan of factor funds. So for me, the additional choice offered by Invest Engine is a big positive over Vanguard. In terms of additional features, Invest Engine does offer a managed service for an additional 0.25% per year, which is reasonably priced and may be something to consider for those wanting a hands-off approach. Unlike Vanguard, it has a phone app and a web app, and they are both super easy to use. There are also a number of handy features, such as regular rebalancing, that allows you to maintain your ETF choices at set weights, or to easily rebalance your portfolio after adding or removing some holdings. They also offer fractional share investing, so you'll never have annoying spare change in your account, and you'll be able to invest the full amount of cash you have. My favourite feature on Invest Engine, though, is the analytics and portfolio look through, which allows you to see how much you've invested in each company indirectly through your ETF holdings. This is great to see, especially when you want to see how your overall portfolio looks like when holding a few ETFs together. This is the holdings breakdown for my own ISA on screen now, and I always find it super interesting to see. So I can see that I have around 63% invested in North America, 13% in Europe excluding UK, 6.2% in Japan, 4.4% in UK, and so on. And then looking at the holdings, my top companies are Microsoft, Nvidia, and Apple. And it's cool to see how much cash you have in each of these companies indirectly through your ETFs. Invest Engine also offers transfers in and out, so you're free to move your investments to and from them, and they currently have a very attractive offer of a bonus of up to £2,500 if you transfer an ISA to Invest Engine. This is available to new and existing customers, and the bonus amount is based on how much you transfer over. But importantly, if you're a new customer, they will also count any cash top-ups during the promotion periods towards your bonus tier. Terms and conditions apply, so make sure you do give them a read. In addition to this ISA bonus, I also have a link in the description that will give you a welcome bonus of up to £50 when you invest £100 yourself. Combining the two bonuses together, you could get yourself a decent chunk of cash to kickstart your Invest Engine portfolio, so it's definitely worth looking into. As with the other bonus, terms and conditions apply, and always remember when investing, your capital is at risk. Overall, my verdict for the Invest Engine ISA is the fee structure clearly makes it among the cheapest providers out there, and I do think the greater investment range and additional features also give it the edge over Vanguard in a direct head to head comparison. For most investors, ETFs are all you need, and with over 610 ETFs to choose from, you will be spoilt for choice on Invest Engine. The last stocks and shares ISA provider that I'll give a detailed run through of is Trading212. This platform has been around since 2003, but you might not have heard of it until more recently. And that is because in recent years, they've started focusing a lot more on their investing arm rather than their trading and CFD parts of the platform. This is another platform that I'm a current customer of, and I've been very happy with my experience. They have a super competitive offering, and as I will show, are another platform that are disrupting the stocks and shares ISA market in the UK. So firstly, in terms of fees, Trading212 has an extremely cheap and easy to understand fee structure for their ISA. There are no platform fees and no dealing fees, and as such, no regular buy or dividend reinvestment fees either. In fact, there are only two fees you need to be aware of. A 0.15% FX fee, which is one of, if not the cheapest among all ISA providers. Remember that the other two providers I went through in this video did not have FX fees because they don't offer stocks or ETFs that trade in a different currency. And the other fee to be aware of on Trading212 is a 0.7% charge on any deposits via card, Google Pay or Apple Pay after £2,000. I don't really think this fee is anything to be worried about though, because it's easily avoided by topping up via bank transfer instead, which is always free. So putting all those fees together, alongside Invest Engine, Trading212 is the cheapest provider currently out there in the UK. 
As I said before, fees are super important because it allows you to keep hold of more of your own money, which you can invest and potentially compound over time. Moving on to the investment range, Trading212 has the most comprehensive investment range out of all the options discussed so far. They offer over 13,000 global stocks and ETFs. There is pretty much any stock or ETF you could ever think of available on the platform. Before signing up, you can actually search on their website what is available, and I'd be very surprised if a stock or ETF that you wanted to invest in is not on the platform. For example, there's everything from large American tech companies such as Nvidia to small UK companies such as Bloomsbury Publishing, and you'll also find ETFs from pretty much every provider you can think of. Trading212 also offers fractional shares, so you do not need to worry about having enough to own a full share of any of these companies or ETFs. You can invest as little as £1 into them. Additionally, as it has no platform fee, just like I said with Invest Engine, it is actually cheaper to hold popular Vanguard ETFs on Trading212 than on the Vanguard platform itself. Lastly, in terms of features and functionality, Trading212 has a lot of exciting features to discuss. They don't offer a managed service, but they have recently launched something that they call ready-made pies. These pies don't have any additional fees attached other than the fees of the ETFs within the pies, so they may be something to look into if you're not sure what to invest in. Speaking of pies, this is actually one of the flagship features of Trading212. As they describe it, a pie is a diversified portfolio that invests automatically for you. You can build your own pie, choose which stocks and ETFs to include, set the weightings, and then set up a regular contribution into the pie if you want to. If you don't want to build your own pie, alongside the ready-made pies, you can also access the community and see what pies other users have been building. I'll give the disclaimer that a lot of users have no idea what they're doing, so please be careful and do your own due diligence before copying anyone's pie. Trading212 has both a mobile app and a web app, and I have experience using both. They're both easy to use and beginner friendly, Unlike other trading platforms, the UI is not cluttered at all, which is a big positive for me. The web app was recently refreshed to pretty much look identical to the phone app, so it is nice to have that consistency across the different apps. Trading212 is also super competitive when it comes to uninvested cash. At the moment, you can get 5.2% APY on any uninvested GBP on Trading212. This beats any easy access bank account that I'm aware of, and importantly, if you hold the cash in an ISA, the interest will not count towards your personal savings allowance, and all the interest is tax-free. The final feature I'll cover is transfers, and Trading212 currently is in the process of rolling out transfers, so depending on when you're watching this video, transfers may or may not be available, but I would expect them to be released very soon. Overall, my verdict for Trading212 is that it is one of the best providers out there due to the very cheap fee structure, incredible investment range, and number of handy and competitive features. For those who want to have the option to invest in individual stocks as well as ETFs, it is one of the cheapest platforms available for doing so. And if you like the sound of Trading212, they are offering incentives for new customers. New ISAs open between January 29th, 2024 and April 30th, 2024 are eligible to participate in the 1% cashback campaign. If you're eligible, this means 1% cashback will be allocated to your invest account for each deposit you make during the 2024-25 tax year. So if you maxed out your ISA and put in 20k, you could get £200 cashback. In addition to this cashback, as a viewer of my channel, if you're a new customer to Trading212, you can get yourself a free share worth up to £100 when you sign up via the link in the description. Alternatively, once you've created an account, you can go to the settings page, click use promo code, and type in my name, Tom, T-O-M, and you should get your free share. So that is a run through of what I believe are three of the best stocks and shares ISA providers for the new tax year. And there are of course many more than that. So I do want to return to my spreadsheet and show you how you can use it to compare lots of different stocks and shares ISA providers yourself. You may be wondering why I didn't give a detailed run through of some of these other popular providers such as Hargreaves Lansdowne and Interactive Investor in this video. And that is partly because I did not want to make the video too long, but also because I wanted to focus on the ones that I believe are the best. And other platforms are, in my opinion, just not that competitive when compared to the these newer providers. On the tab called Stocks and Shares ISAs 2024, you'll be able to find all the details for a range of popular providers. It tells you everything from the fees, what investments they offer, as well as features, trust pilot review score, and my comments at the end. You'll be able to go through all this in more detail yourself, but what I want to show is the example annual cost tab, as this helps you visualize just how big the fee differences can be. Keep in mind this is for a portfolio of ETFs or individual stocks. Some providers have different fee structures for holding mutual funds, such as Hargreaves Lansdowne. So to keep the comparison fair, I'm comparing platform fees for holding ETFs. 
I hope this shows you at a glance why I believe the providers that I went through in this video are among the best. Especially Invest Engine and Trading212. Regardless of portfolio size, there is no platform fee. A key thing to keep in mind though, is that these fees in green adjust the platform fees and you need to consider all the other fees you'll pay when using the account and making investments. So for example, Hargreaves Lansdowne and AJ Bell may seem pretty cheap, but if you're the sort of person making trades all the time, then these dealing fees are going to start to stack up and counteract any perceived cheapness. Whereas Invest Engine, Trading212 and Vanguard don't have any additional fees for dealing, so you are free to change your portfolio as much as you want without worrying about those fees stacking up. To be fair to the likes of Hargreaves Lansdowne though, I do not think they're as expensive as some people make them out to be. For holding ETFs and individual stocks, a platform fee cap of £45 is pretty good, and you can actually avoid the expensive dealing fees for the most part if you top up via direct debit. In fact, most providers have some sort of discount when using direct debit or regular buy for monthly contributions, so that is worth looking into. Another one of note here is iWeb that may well look attractive due to the zero platform fees, but if you look across, you can see they charge £5 for every trade for UK stocks. And for international stocks, they have a huge 1.5% FX fee. So for example, if you bought £10,000 worth of Nvidia, it would cost you about £150 in FX fees alone. You really need to consider all fees when making your decision, and I hope this spreadsheet makes it super easy for you to make a more informed choice. Before bringing the video to an end, I did say that I'd quickly go over what I'm planning on doing, and what I'll be doing is taking advantage of the new ISA rules and opening an ISA with both Invest Engine and Trading 2 on 2. I currently use both of these platforms anyway, and I'm super happy with them, so I see no reason to switch, but I have been forced to use the Invest account rather than the ISA on Trading 2 on 2, as I had been contributing to an Invest Engine ISA this tax year. It is great for me that I'll now be able to have ISAs on both of my favourite platforms, and that is why I think this is the most exciting ISA year yet for a lot of people. For the first time ever, from the 6th of April 2024, you can try out and contribute to as many stocks and shares ISAs as you want, as long as you ensure your total contributions across all of them do not exceed 20k. If you're wondering why I'm bothering going with two ISAs, it's because I like to separate my core portfolio of ETFs on Invest Engine from my more hands-on individual stock investments over on Trading212. For me personally, if I only had a Trading212 ISA, I'd be worried that I'd get too distracted by individual stocks all the time and make changes that I regret. Invest Engine keeps me disciplined by limiting my core portfolio to ETFs, and it works better in my mind to have that ETF portfolio held separately. That is it for this one. Let me know in the comments which provider you'll be opening a Stocks and Shares ISA with come the 6th of April. I really do think that this year is a game changer with the new ISA rules. However, a Stocks and Shares ISA is just one type of tax advantage account we have in the UK, and if you've not already, be sure to check out my video on Best Sips. A self-invested personal pension is also an incredibly powerful account. Regardless, I'll see you in the next one, and as always, thank you for watching.